about things that have been changing and evolving. So some recent evolution, um, the imaging, we're playing with our icono and there are something I found amazing. This is we've been doing already before, I call this transnational access to retrograde feeders and I'll try to explain it here. So here is an unruptured AVM, but he has some growing deficits progressively. His wife is a physician, he's not a physician, it's located in central circus. And this is here the right ICA with feeders coming from MCA and ACA. But look where the AVM is located. This is mainly in ACA territory. With anastomosis coming from MCA, but most feeders, because of this location, can only be ACA. And this is here the run where you can see real life the way it looks like. I put it again. So it's a 3 uh, 0.5 centimeter AVM. Now you just see what's coming from the ACA. And maybe we can look here where you see this main feeder, some aneurysm already on the core, something coming from here. And now I do a rotational angiogram, but maybe you can take a, a look. This rotational angiogram, you only see the MCA, not the ACA, because I placed the balloon in the ACA not to get uh, both territory together. So this is only the MCA with a balloon uh, placed in A1, and this is only the ACA, and here it's easier, it's because I went to the other side, but I also placed the balloon here, I kept the balloon here in A1, so that I don't have a superimposition. Because what we want to know is which arteries are coming from where, which is the part coming from MCA, and which is a part coming from ACA. So we all know that when we do a rotation... And this, and the ACA was more fistula type? The well, ACA, I would say, has a direct feeder, yes. more fistula type, absolutely, and the MCA has a direct... MCA is more, you could say, leptomeningeal... And this is what you can obtain. I go back here, look here at these pictures. We have here the MCA in blue, the color coding you can choose. So usually I put the MCA in red, so here I did not do it, but okay. It's not an issue. And the ACA is red. And now you can not only fuse, this is a picture which is a marketing picture, but it does not help. The answer of your question is here on the NPRs. And very thin plus NPRs, so I can, we can look at the video. And look at this here. This is super important. Blue is MCA, agree? So this is the MCA branches, and if you follow the MCA branches, you see that you arrive in anastomosis super difficult arteries to treat, to, to pass. You can pass through the anastomosis and then they converge to this artery. And this here is in the territory of the ACA. And look here, do you see this? What is this? What is this here? It is what we cannot see. It's the artery here from the ACA in orange, which is here getting mostly to a shunt. So we don't see more of it, it stops here. There's nothing getting beyond because here it only goes to the shunt. And because of the fusion, it fits one to one perfectly. It's amazing that you can realize just by doing two 3Ds and you tell the system, come on, make a fusion. And you see here that this is a distal ACA that comes retrogradly. And now you have so the, the proof. Blue, the blue is vain? No, oh, the, is the actor, is it's the artery. It's this artery. artery. It's a distal artery. Without okay. NVM, okay. you would see that artery getting up to the cortex, but this artery is coming retrogradly by the anastomosis, aspirated by the NVM. And you know that it's existing, but when you put a microcatheter inside, and this is what we're going to do here, this is an injection from, there it is. from the microcatheter and the MCA, and just before here, what do you see? You see the anastomosis. You know that you cannot cross with anastomosis. And the reason why we fail to cure AVM is because we cannot access to this artery. And then in the end you say, I've done all the feeders, and the feeders I cannot access are the reason to fail. Forget of venous, just arterial. But if you see it, and if you see where the connection should be, if you know where it is, then you can try to go there. And this is injection from the anterior. And you cannot see from the anterior, 
you cannot see anything. And why can't you see anything? Because the AVM is aspirating everything. You see this, and then you see the AVM. Maybe you see something here. This is orange, what to, was to be seen on arteries. But if you push the magic, it will always go to the AVM. It will go in 150% to the AVM, not in 90%. Always. You, you don't get it here. But if you know that it's there, then you can try to go with So here's the wire. Look at B. B is more interesting, left with you. So absolutely wants to go to the shunt. You don't want to, so you have to fight a little bit. And ask him to be so kind. And here goes to the shunt. No, this is not the course. You know the course from the analysis of the FPRs. And now you start to go in the good direction on B. This is rain speed. You see, it did not take so much time. So now you're on the way. But now it went to another shunt. And the reason why you don't see it, it's along this segment are multiple shunts. And that's why it's impossible to see the continuity of the artery. But now that you've been taking the wire a bit out, you make a roadmap from behind. So you know where you have to go to. And at some point, I can make this a bit faster. Now you see A and B. So why is going there? You can get access to the artery. And when you've done this, you know that you're able to get to the unaccessible arteries, and because of this, you enlarge the range a lot of what we can do. And this is super important, and it's even more important to do this from the first procedure, because any other procedure, you will occlude this artery, and say that you've been doing a good job, potentially, but losing the ability to use this artery to go to the retrograde arteries. So this is super important, and we've been doing it already before having the uh, double 3D, 3D fusion, so I call this 6D. But if you have the color coding, then it becomes obvious, and then you have no choice, you have to do it. And then once you do this, you inject, you see that all the flow is coming retrogradly, and then you can make a trapping, so you follow with scatter number two, cheating technique, and once you cheat, you do put uh, some branch sound liquid coils here, then some branch sound liquid coils there, and here a long catheter with a long tip. You need here five centimeters, otherwise the segment is too long. So coils here, coils there, additional glue there, and then all the rest is being occluded, and you occlude this whole segment. Mm. And then you see that the AVM, after this procedure, you've been treating uh, most of it, and the interesting thing is, most of those anastomoses from the MCA are gone. They're not completely gone, but they will be gone. I treated this patient step two last week, so I can show the rest here. Uh, this is one week later. Um, so hold on, no, this is still the end of the first procedure. You see the anastomoses are mostly gone. This here does not give something anymore. And if we continue, this is the second step. Second step, we could have done transactorially, but we had the central sulcus, which is highly functional. And uh, if we embolize from here, maybe we can arrive there. But by sure, we're going to kill all this brain. We're going to kill all this brain. So, not a good idea. And you can look at the non MCA branch, and maybe this one can be done, but it won't solve the problem. At least it shows us one vein. And then we look again at other MCA branches, and none of them are really so good. So then we go to the ACA, and when we go to the ACA, look at the veins, on, and look at here what goes there, many collaterals. So we start to look at the collaterals, and this is certainly not to be analyzed, because, uh, because uh, the shunts are there. And if you put the tip of your catheter here, we will kill a lot too much brain, not possible. So we search for another one, and then through another way, I could get here. And if you're here, then you won't kill brain. But here, look at the vein. This is still artery, 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 and the shunt starts here. This is a primary vein. So now you start to understand the ADM. Here's a primary vein. But this was a vein we could see. Here's the artery. Then the, the um, artery or vein, I don't know. At least this is a primary artery. I should have put it in. I, I don't know <coughs> what it is. But there is here this part. But there's 
going out there, but the second vein too. And then the question is how to treat for this. And I tended first only to treat this, and finally I changed opinion. So I put, oh, sorry, I put um, one catheter here. This is a venous injection. And then, okay, here we see it. This is the venous catheter here. And then I took the catheter in the other vein in order to control both veins and then to pressure cook the rest. This is first the uh, occlusion of the first part so that they don't have to analyze here and then the occlusion of the other part. This, these are the shunts getting to the inferior vein there. And then it's being occluded. And you see that here, control always by the micro catheter and the different arteries to make sure that you have nothing left. And all what we see here is gray. So no need to continue. This was kept. This is just a retrograde injection in the vein. No way to analyze this because we will a lot of brain. And he woke up. It was last, um, I think, one week or 10 days ago. Um, he had some emipresis. The arm was normal within two days. And I told him goodbye, I think, on this Monday, or so three days ago. He went back home, and he has a bit of difficulty of the leg, and he's going to recover. And it was a two-step procedure for a three and a half centimeter at the end of the plus so, so this is important. Here is another patient. I treated her Tuesday. Today was Thursday, so Tuesday. It's the first procedure. She's 18 years old. Her mother is a physician. She never bled. She had one seizure. She has aneurysms everywhere. Here you see one. And you want to tell her what is the perspective to say you're going to be ill your whole life and you have aneurysms that are going to bleed. So again, you see here that it's mostly ACA territory with a lot of anastomosis from MCA. And the most largest feeders are, of course, here has the direct accesses by periclosal and callosal marginal. And behind the ABM, you don't see the arteries. So if you don't see the arteries behind the ABM, you know that they come retrogradly. Same thing. So the arteries must be retrogradly. How to find them? And here we took this here. And this is amazing. Um, what color is what? This is here, um, orange is MCA, this is coronal view, superesthetic sinus, MCA, ACA, okay? And we see comes down there, and we may see here MCA is orange, here you see a large vessel, this can only be an artery, and then when it's fused, it's, these are veins. So you may understand something, but the sagittal views are much more interesting, so I'm coming down the sagittal views. So here you see that the key, the large here, pericolosa, is in view. The MCA branches are in orange. And now we have here sagittal view. So this is anterior, this is posterior. ACA is blue, MCA is orange. And if you look here, again to the anastomosis, that you are not able to cross with a microcatheter, and suddenly at some point we see here one large artery, and this one, look at this. It's a three millimeter artery, which is only fed by collaterals from MCA arriving in the ABM with some shunting here, but shunting on the course, so we don't have the same nice picture that I had before. It does not always work, but at least you know that here's an artery that you need to find. So now, after doing this fusion of both 3Ds, after doing these pictures, you see here the ACA, which is in blue. And most of this is being drained in blue. Then you look at the MCA, and you do injections that are distant enough up to see those arteries, which are beyond anastomosis, which are the distal branches of the ACA, feeding retrograde is the ABM. Actually, and as you the washout tells you this yes. coming from. And as you cannot access directly, you must find a way to get there indirectly. But if you inject the ACA, you see only shunts. But you know which course it has to be. So once you know it, then you can look for it. And here we are on the way. And now I went up one. And by doing it, I finally realized that there were two. So here I injected some branch liquid coils. 
and then I saw that the other one was much larger than the one that I treated just before. So I had to replace the catheter in the second one. And, and then trapping of the artery, some concentrated hysterical here, and then injection retrograde from here back to there in order to occlude this. And this is one feeder, but taking the best of the feeder, not only doing the proximal of it. The more anterior is it NBCA, the more anterior is Yes, NBCA. This is NBCA, highly concentrated How did in I know? artery. How did I know? Uh, because it is not like a lava shape. Sorry? It's not like lava. It is. Look at, look at the, the radiopacity of one versus the other and the way it's spread. Okay, I'm sorry, I just wanted to wake up. <laughs> the radiopacity is different and he needs MBCA. So this is after first treatment. And she has bit paralysis of the. Of, uh, the Read the beer? <laughs> uh, of uh, the foot, she cannot raise up her foot, but when there is the posterior margin was central sulcus, we did the posterior part and we already reduced it significantly. So next time uh, I intend to go down that vein to have this treated. Okay. okay, but this is next time, it's not done. Wait, wait, go, go back, go back. You see the, the depth of the uh, medical spiral artery? Uh, it's a, it's a so yeah. ask, ask Dr. Well, how is going to deal with that. Number one. Number two, aren't you afraid that he left those aneurysms there? What do you think is going to happen to that? Look at that MC aneurysm, distal aneurysm. He's not afraid. I mean, he, he's just washed it out. It's just... So, it, I mean, my understanding these are flow-related aneurysms, so if you want to protect it ideally you will decrease the flow distally but if you do that you develop a pressure gradient and makes more which makes my understanding aneurysm are more likely to rupture which is comfortable the question is if you leave that now would that increase flow and can that aneurysm rupture and the experience shows that it does not rupture what makes aneurysm rupture is the importance of flow and if you turn down the flow distally, then this aneurysm would shrink and disappear. The alternative is to How say... How much time would you wait to the next procedure? We wait for economical reasons six weeks. Okay, so it's, oh, it's no anyway, way. No, uh, no, we never had those bleedings, never. And if we would like here to occlude the artery now, we would lose potential access to the artery if we want to treat. So, Ah, the artery, the aneurysm is the enemy, but it must not be attacked frontally. <laughs> Let's wait to, to have it done with another step. Is your paisan? We met before. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> so, okay, and how are you going to lead with the, with the that particular side of the supply? Uh, I, I, I guess that this one here, we put also a catheter inside. There's another flow related aneurysm, which is, I guess, here or there. Another one where we said, mm. so she has many, and on the vein she has also somewhere a very large one. I don't know whether it's here or there. So, so when the more we looked selectively at the ABM, the more we Fine. had a confirmation that it's good to treat her. Uh, but this you know only once the microcatheter has been in to see all the changes. But the good thing is, I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to cure her. And five centimeter, I said usually per centimeter one session. And the rule now is going to be less. So if we do by the day the depart, this would be step two and maybe three or four. So it's uh, saving that that, that to, to penetrate. Mm -hmm. That may actually go when you go transpenous. I, I I really hope so. We can see somewhere in the course of this vein, because this will be the late phase, and this is this vein that goes down here. And if we're here. Then we're at the origin of at the location at the shunt, just like what we did today while treating the vein of gallon transvenously. And all the shunts are around there. This is the Centrum Somio Valley, and uh, it's very functional. And getting to these arteries, when you embolize them, you always. All this embolization first from ACA, correct? This is. Oh, yes, I think the MCA regress a little bit. Yes. Oh yes, and now here all those shunts, this here will be this size next time. Mm -hmm. 
Like this here, this would be gone, I expect. Also, it would be gone. So this is point one. Trace value access to get from other that's the uh, where fusion of 3D helps a lot. Point two, combination of TAE and TBE, transactor and transvenous. Our learning curve in transvenous has been a small ABM, deep located, which is the worst for all other techniques, is the one to be treated because you can access easier to access by the deep in the system. And if it's not large, don't forget when you occlude the vein, you're condemned to success. If you leave some chance and the vein is done, the AVM will blow up. So this is scary and that's why you cannot treat too large. But the interesting thing is we realize that if you can find out that you just that you have just one part of the AVM, you can treat one part by the artery, one part by the vein, and go on step by step this way, and this is a beauty, so you mix everything. And here is a tricky AVM. This is difficult because AVM is located in the territory of the PCA, but the PCA makes nothing except this big corridor thing. So it's a five to six centimeter ABM, very deeply located, too large for radio surgery, too large for surgery, and filled in by all anastomosis, getting all around the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe. So crazy anatomy, no good feeling, no good way to do it. But anastomosis is not so small. That's why when the anastomosis, and something by the arterial. So this is the only good artery you can access directly to have at least the medium part of the ABM done. So here, whenever it's possible to take a extended length magic, magic 1.2 in 180 centimeter, then you can go around, and if it's difficult, but it's okay, magic 1.2, I will also make it in order to achieve this point here. Now we're in the long enough for this? Sorry? Mm. And yes. way it's not enough. It makes it. And then, but ah, when you cross there, it's dangerous. You must take care. It's time consuming. But here is one astrobosis, here is another one. Step two, this time we took the direct access via the ACA to <coughs> here use Onyx and make this is injection of Onyx. You see the ACA for an art mobilization, all this part has been done. But of course, the MCA is still there. You see what has been done once by one anastomosis, mobilization number three. You try to get access here to go around <coughs> to that artery, which is possible. But now you see one artery and one vein. And if you have a from here by the artery, you will get this. But you won't get all arteries arriving in this vein. And this vein here is not so difficult. It's coming from the lateral sinus, but it's not so difficult. So if you see the vein, you see it has a navigation around the vestibule. If you see this vein, then you can make a retrograde right injection. And look at this one's a vein. Now it's seen by the transvenous injection. Then you can go there. And if you embolize from the vein, of course you will get the artery where you are with, with your magic. So you can do it from one side or the other side. But then you can do the other arteries arriving there. So you get much more of it. So the idea is to isolate the vein. And if you have a small isolated vein, if you go from the vein, it looks like this, and you will get all arteries. So here we did much more than if you would have done only by the artery. And then step number four, central arterial navigation to anastomosis via the anterior branches, anterior temporal branches to do this with Onyx, also Sonic could do it, and you could get more. Uh, embolization number five is to go around those anastomosis here to get this anterior part, and this is time consuming, difficult, but you may see which artery you may be taking to go up there. And once the magic opens the door, then you can sheep with Sonic. The fact that one catheter is in place makes navigability with the second catheter, which is less navigable, better, and then you can get all this bunch of vessels, so that now we arrive at the point that there were four transarterial, 
one transvenous, and this is the only thing which is remaining. And it's not so much. But it's D, you don't understand well, and now it's important to make a Venus approach by understanding what I call the Venus segmentation. How are the veins connected? And you see here the main outflow vein that receives one vein and the second one. So here are two primary veins with somehow a paradox. You want to bring the microcatheter as distant as possible, but if you're here, are you sure that you're able to go out and in again? So do you want to stay with one here? But then it's more difficult to have all this way retrograde and here towards the shunt, or you take two catheters, and then you make the plug here. So this is what we did here, one catheter here, one catheter there, and the third one, we make our plug there. And here is injection through each vein simultaneously that converge here. And this is injection of one compartment, injection of the second compartment. And she's cured. To her succession, this was a high one, but it's cured. And it's cured because of this combination. When, when, you, you, when you shepherd, when you uh, get the first catheterization and you mm -hmm. struggle for getting to the right position, uh, you've shown many times that you can get much faster mm -hmm. With a wire or without a wire, the first one? Because I think I finally understood. So, the first one requires a wire yeah. and requires a wire which is super bad. And okay, so but you, got, you got there, you got there. Once the wire is in place, the second one, uh, you need to have a wire with a cobra shape and you turn the turn wire around. around the first one. Right. And when you will turn it like this, it then it will right. follow. But, I think, but in the first chapter, you leave the wire? You leave the wire to so straighten the artery. To straighten the artery. Yes, right. Because they are like marionette, they supervise uh, the vessels. That, so you put you the change, wire, you change the, the a lot of the curves, you make them straight. And like when you, you have the right here. here, to have a U turn, what means a U turn? You can have a U turn like this, you can have a U turn like this. The so U turn of the anterior spinal artery is a disaster. Herpin. Difficult. Because it's a hairpin, because the radius is super short. But once the catheter is inside, you open the radius. And because you open the radius, the second one will have to be much easier. And the interesting thing is, the second one can be a microcatheter that would not have been able to bring in initially because of the too difficult navigation. So that's a charm. You open the door with something well navigable to be able to navigate something which is more okay. difficult to bring in. Can you, can you go back just two slides? More, more. The one, yes, these, yes, these two, yes. The, 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 that was the veins, with these two veins. Mm -hmm. I mean, you say you used three microcatheters. Yes. You have to do the pressure cooker. So if you put one microcatheter in the more distal one, mm -hmm. This is, for example, the one you're going to use for the onyx. Uh -huh. The second microcatheter in the more proximal one, and yeah. then okay. here, and then you inject glue from the one, the, the, the more proximal one. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's not the same language. Take the computer and tell me why you put the tip of number one. I'm saying, one. okay, let's say we put the tip of number one here. This is where you're going to mm. push the onyx. Mm. And then you put the tip of the sure. second one here. Mm -hmm. This is where you're gonna do the glue. Mm -hmm. you're, this is where you're gonna do the the plug. And ah, wait, wait, the very, very different. If you do glue there, it's against the flow. But the problem is no, it's use, gonna go back. It's gonna go back. No, you 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 gotta go back. You, yes, this you, is what you, we want. You, you're right, but here you have also. It's gonna go back you all the way to where you want. But he wants here. to penetrate. To the nidus. Yes, and then from from the distal one, it's going to get both things. Well, but you have two separate compartments, way. maybe already separated. Here, this compartment, you can see it here, towards this compartment. So you need to enter all those AV shots from there. I mean, these are two, two, two primary veins mm -hmm. going, two yeah, mental but veins but going to the same not, primary. What it did was, you know, why not put the pressure back? Yeah. The, the, uh, the coils yes, and the, the plug there. was there. The plug was there. Yeah. And the good things was then set in the French Fubuki, you can place three microcatheters. No, I mean, you can get 
you can get the same viewing just through microphone. He, he, he was trying how, to say. How, how, how can you explain me one is here where you inject onyx, and it's the second one you inject glue? Well, it's going to go back. The glue is going to go back and form the plug in the primary no, power. That's right. He would, I would do that one first. He said he would inject glue there. No, no there. No, no, no. There, glue first. Mm -hmm. And push the glue up, 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 up. up it's going to form the plug. And then these Pulse. two veins, segmental veins, are drained into the same primary vein that you plug. But you haven't penetrated. No, no. The, the main vein is this one. Yes. So it, one is going up there. No, I understand so what that's what he said. up there. If you inject glue there. No, he wants you to reflux the glue fire. You inject glue there. Look, 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 come up. up. Come up. Keep on injecting more, 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 more. Stop. Stop here. And then the onyx is going to get there. the territory of both. Not sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. this is a question. Do you have veno venous anastomosis? Mm -hmm. Sometimes yes, you sometimes no. You don't know yeah. this. So you reduce the chance of having it. You and may, I think it's safer but if you may safer. not. So in the end the idea is the more you have accesses to the shunts, the safer you are. Just bring this to another question. I mean how far do the how can you know that the segments, like these two segments, when do they drain? So when to stop? How far to go? And here again, cross-sectional imaging of MPRs mm -hmm. is very important because you can see the other veins, there may be another junction to another vein here. And to know this, when you, when we look at the MPRs. The I'm going to show examples with the following patients. Okay. We do one more, one more patient. This is fantastic. Um, Combination of uh, okay, this is not so interesting. I will pass this. Uh, this is not so interesting. I pass him. I mean, uh, it's it's good. Um, maybe this one here. That's a patient with. That's a small girl. She's nine years old, and she had a couple of seizures, partial seizures, and again the beauty of mixing arterial and venous. First treatment was anterior branch of um, the MCA, something here, not here. First one anterior embolization. And then the difficulty is that the shunts are there, which means they are mostly fed by the transmedullary branches. You have no cortical artery that ends up there, and of course a lot of lenticular striates. So you don't have a good arterial access, which is a difficulty usually in insular ABN, because you have no terminal branches. But after um, the first transvenous, the treatment was done by this vein, which I don't show here to detail, to go to the vein and to say, we want to do other different steps, but all of the vein, all of this done. And you see that the whole difficult part, now here it's a specimen of four ABN. Once you've been doing the vein, the deep part, it becomes a specimen of three. And now that it's a specimen of three here, Maybe surgically accessible, but it's accessible for us too. And if you look at this, then I did a transarterial part this year, getting through Zeus and Estomosis, getting this. This was transarterial number two. So first arterial, set venous, set arterial again, then um, transarterial number three, which what was. Which artery did you use? Uh, so here it was an artery coming from there. Was that into the this? No, it was navigation to quite distal anastomosis here from the frontal basal artery arriving here and enabling to get a quite large territory. He was another arterial taking the, the largest arteries here, uh, the largest possible to make the, the macro shunt. So most of it is done now, but in fact it's difficult what we made because you have one vein that drains by a cortical vein to super essential sinus. And if you see here, you have shunts a bit everywhere, a bit here, a bit there. It's quite diffuse inside. And the question is, how are the primary veins? Can you see inside onyx? And no. And that's very frightening because remaining here from there and saying, I inject from the cortical vein. Ah, where is it? Where is my, sorry, here and injecting here from the, um, I should take the pointer, from the origin of the cortical vein, take this, injecting from the origin of this cortical vein. 
pretending that it will go everywhere is difficult. And now, so going back to the situation, we've been reducing, we did two, one transvenous, three transarterial, and this is what remains with a little bit of address everywhere. And for me, this is quite scary because how to know that we're going to put the shots medially and laterally? Knowing that I don't say the whole truth here, he has also meningeal supply. They give something which is very superficial, but which does not give to the, which does not go to the deep part. And, um, oh, I did not put it into detail, sorry. So, in fact, in this patient, I can show you at another occasion. But you came through the vein, through the vein. I went through the vein, and I was amazed to see that the Icono enables to understand where the primary vein is and to navigate only based on understanding of anatomy of the Icono, where the vein was, and maybe you can see it here. This is the one you put the Iconos? Yes, it was on, and I could bring the tip of one catheter here, the tip of another catheter there. So we, but for, to deliver the Iconos, you needed a catheter with a 21 ID, no? No, no, on the Siemens Icono, oh, I could understand you know the, the you venous. Know, I, you know when I thought you were talking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the mm. stent like thing, this is shit, what? Uh, so so okay. I, I could understand the venous segmentation despite all onyx around, which I think is really amazing. Did, and, and we finished it, and believe me, this little girl, she is perfect. She has absolutely nothing. And uh, if you look at the DWI imaging, if you look at flares, there's going to be a lot of edema. But she has no ischemia, and that's amazing that they had no ischemia, because the difference is, is significantly. And now we skipped also, we moved to transvenous only, such as this patient here. This, this patient is 22 years old. The whole corpus callosum is involved, and he bled one year before. And if you look at the posterior circulation, as if it would be enough, he has still also part of the sclenium, which is coming also to there. And how to treat him? And if you look here, uh, you see the venous segmentation, how the veins are connected, and the anterior part is something which is draining exclusively by this vein. So to treat it, you see here our venous pressure cooker, I put preventively into patients where I fear that onyx will go to the artery because the connections are very close. I place preventively some stent rivers and they be helpful. And you see that the anterior part was fully transvenous only. Transvenous only. Here's a pressure cooking, occlusion of all this so that the ABM has been reduced significantly. And now here we do the second procedure, and I want you to see this. This is, uh, okay, marketing picture, because you have different colors, but you understand nothing based on this. <laughs> so we we'll skip the marketing pictures, and we we'll move on to the important thing, which are the NPR and the shadow reviews. And this is important, because you see the part from the splenium from the posterior circulation, and you see the part from the anterior, which is orange. MCA is not participating. And you see the color of the veins. And here is a mixed pattern, because it's given, coming from both posterior and anterior. But look at here. You see the blue. Here is a vein which is joining the large one. But this blue here, you may see it continuing up to there which means the posterior part, which was my goal of treatment, is draining in the vein, which is arriving here. And in fact, you may see that there's not only one, but two veins in parallel, this one and this one, which we'll be seeing also on those pictures. So the analysis is incredible, because when you can analyze, you can understand how the veins are, how the venous segmentation is, which veins you have to occlude up to which point, and here again, two right. catheters in both veins, pressure cooking, and the whole posterior part was done, keeping this for the third step, and the third step was treated here. So you don't, worry, you don't worry that you did front and back, because each one had their segmental drainage. Yes, I mean, and because of this, the veins give you the key to make different parts, and then it's possible to cure him. When I did step two and before doing step three, I shared this, the images with some colleague that told me that he may have massive uh, 
uh, psychomotor uh, impairment as if you would do um, callosotomy, which is massive problem. So I did all the tests to say uh, we allowed to continue, and indeed um, he's a bit slow, but he's living normally. He's still doing his job. So now we show you this picture. Yeah. This is a patient. This picture was taken end of August, beginning of September, after treatment number three. The patient is doing fine. He's back to work now, and he's marrying in November. So uh, it, it's surprising. <coughs> and if we would have gone by the arteries, we would have created much more of ischemia. Maybe yeah, another it's one. It's uh, but it's similar to the other one we saw in this young lady. So the uh, first was a transnidal. I, I will skip this because it's just the same of doing stage transarterial and transvenous and finally to um, understand the segmentation. I, I will move on to this. I want to show you one last and then I will finish this stuff. Um, same thing. He, I left hospital on Tuesday, this patient. This is here to understand the venous segmentation, or maybe I can go backwards. You can see here is one vein. Here is a second vein. And once you see it, you can catheterize both, control them, and from the veins, fin finish the ABM. So I'm gonna go out of it, and here um, show the end. So the notion of nidus is we all know what the nidus is and we all don't understand what an ABM is when we look at these pictures because these pictures don't know, not show this. And this is what ABMs are. There are different veins coming together and all those veins having a bunch of arteries around. Nothing else. And if you skip to the scheme and you consider that each ABM is like this, then the the goal of the game is to find for each one one vein which is accessible, which is large enough in, in order which is long enough that you can occlude it isolately without compromising the other one. And once you've got this, then you can treat any ABM. Other interesting situations are this kind of ABM, super deep, which was treated in four steps. First vein, this one. Second vein, this one. Third vein, here are two veins, one here, one there. This was the third vein that was done. And fourth vein is then the last one, this here, which is being cured. Same thing, other patients, exactly the same ABM, but additional difficulty is that we lost the connection between the deep veins and the straight sinus. But before we had a quite easy access, and now we have a terrible access, which is one of those anastomotic veins crossing along the midline and joining the deep circulation. Which means each time we start to go by the vein, we need to go from the supersaturated sinus in one anastomotic vein to get one vein. This was first treatment. This is here the anastomotic vein that you may see here that gives access to the great cerebral vein and then to this one, this was the one we did in step number two, and then step number three is the one we did, and now the ABM is cured, or almost cured, maybe it's a little thing. After stress treatment, he had a little bit of something, some heavy praises, but the father sends me regularly video where he, each time he's playing ball inside the house, <laughs> so I don't know about, yes, about um, the, um, all the things that may break, still <laughs> some are alive, but he's doing fine for this kind of ABM. And so the last thing, and this is the last patient I'm gonna show, is for me, I learned a lot when understanding in retrospect which error I would have done if, it were, if I would have treated uh, differently. He is, she's 17 years old, we controlled her uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I treated her last year. And she's an ABM which is exactly the same like um, Mariana. <laughs> same one, same location. This frontobasal, usually they have no accessible arteries. But they have a vein that where you may get access, even if here the vein was a bit difficult because it was joining the cavernous sinus. But it works also somehow. And 
here you have something coming from the MCA. So first thing to be done is to get an access by the MCA to do a bit of something as much as possible. So there is some reduction, but most of the ADM is still there. And then there must be a feeder from A1. So you search, you search, and you finally at some point find a feeder, which is a Hochner artery, which is this one here, which goes down. There we have it. This is a catheterization, the course A1, up there, going up to there. And this is in injection from up there. Question, do you embolize? You, you have no other artery here. So the logical answer would be but yes. In, in, in a right place, we would have, uh, you know, uh, probably SCPs and MPs mm. and do a provocative test. Mm. Mm. Well, <laughs> yes, provocative test is a way to... <laughs> but, uh, mm. This is Alex. <laughs> Alex knows. <laughs> and we have done a provocative test. Not Alex responder who would have said, you've got a good feeder, go on for it. And, and so this is injection. And there will be something else and only at the end. That's why please look at it a second time. It's a and look at it a third time. You just see at the end. But you see also the vein very well. And if you see the vein very well, you can go here, you make a rotation angiogram, you see the coronal sinus, you see that there's a way to get access, coronal sinus, temporal vein, and then the main outflow vein of the ADM. And this is injection through the artery. The connection, coronal sinus is easy, this here is always painful, and once you've done yeah, this, perfect. you can access there. This is one hour usually. <laughs> and, and then you can play, you can rotate images to understand how your vein is, but you just see arteries feeding shunts, and here maybe there are two veins, I would say one vein is here, one vein is there, they come together, or maybe it was the on onyx, and pressure cooking, two catheters, coils, head from blood injection, 90 minutes later, this is the first shot of squid 12, so you can see here how the onyx diffuses retrogradly. You see here, you're fighting against the flow. This is super interesting. The most interesting picture of embolization. When it goes against the flow, still somehow plugs the pipe. You see here one primary vein. You see another primary vein. You're filling your tree. This is a picture that enables to understand the angular architecture of the ADM. Once you've been seeing this 10 times, then you're convinced that all ADMs are this venous segmentation with on top arteries. I can do it very fast again. You inject one vein, the other large vein, and the little stuff around. And it's always like this. Always. always. This is how ADMs are. And the ADM is pure, so you can stop to inject. And this is injection through up there after the same catheter left in the same position where you don't see the shunts anymore, but you see a bunch of reticulous triates mm. that we would have concluded more or less if we would have gone by there. Mm. <laughs> and when I saw this in retrospect, I was not far away to inject the artery and say, it's a good feeder, but this patient had clearly nothing. If I would have gone through the artery, she's 17, she would have recovered from a stroke. But this shows that arterial embolization is usually creates more ischemia. I don't pretend that transvenous does not create complications. And if you have complications, this may be terrible complication because if you don't occlude all shunts, then the ABM will blow up. But arterial embolization is not without risk, and here's a good way to understand it in this prospect. <laughs>